and let people roll in and then we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you for your patience. Okay, let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Welcome to our webinar entitled Summertime Live-In is Easy, Top 10 Store Use Cases, Part 2. I'm Shree Sheth, and I'll be your moderator today for this very popular event. We broke our record for number of webinar registrations, so a huge thank you for everyone who is registered and is attending. We're excited to host Part 2 of our Top 10 Store Use Case webinar series. If you had a chance to join us last October for part one, you saw a series of SOAR use cases that can help enable your SOC, and we do hope to build on those and more with you all today. Thank you to everyone for joining us. Just a quick review of our usual housekeeping items before we begin. If you have any questions, please type them in on the right-hand area of the GoToWebinar platform, and we will address as many as time permits. I would like to keep this as conversational as possible. So if you have any questions related to a topic at hand, I'll make sure to weave them in. Finally, we are recording this session and I will be sending you an email containing the recording and the product demo links by this Friday. And now I have the pleasure of introducing our speakers. Please welcome Jane and Pamuk. Jane, over the years, has held various marketing roles in cybersecurity companies, with the occasional foray into different areas like supply chain, big data, mobile consumer apps, so she gets out of her comfort zone now and then. Jane is currently responsible for Demister product marketing, which means she gets to write lots of marketing copy, <laughs> create PowerPoint decks, and occasionally present on webinars such as this. Our second speaker is Pramuk. Pramuk serves as our technical marketing manager, in his free time, Pramuk likes reading books and hiking in one of our many county parks in California. And now I'll go ahead and turn it over to both Jane and Pramuk. Thank you, Sri, for the introductions and welcome to our summertime session on SOAR use cases. As the Gershwin song goes, summertime is for chilling and fishing and easy living. But unfortunately, data breaches happen every day and there's really no seasonal downtime in the SOC. So in the SOC, we know this, the living isn't always easy. You have to deal with um, growing alerts. In our source survey last year, respondents told us that they average between 10 to 12,000 alerts per week. And it's not just the volume, but the complexity of these alerts are also increasing. And there's never enough people to go around to chase after these alerts. So when your team is busy chasing alerts and putting out fires, it's really hard for them to think about consistency of response. Now, how many of you have processes for handling different types of incidents? And more importantly, are you and your teammates actually following these processes consistently? Again, in our source survey, we found that more than half of the respondents did not have any process playbooks in place, or they are rarely updated. So the net result here is obviously longer MTTR, mean time to respond, and potentially an increased risk exposure for your company. But it is summer and you don't want to be stuck all day in the SOC. So let's see if we can find more ways to automate and streamline your SOC operations so you can get out and enjoy some of that warm weather. And depending on where you are, hot and humid weather, and maybe even sneak some real fishing in. Now, before we jump into the use cases, uh, here's some quick one-on-one -on, -one on Demisto for those of you who are here for the first time. So Demisto is a SOAR platform, and SOAR stands for Security Orchestration, Automation, and Response. Demisto was natively designed to be a SOAR platform, so we put a lot of thought into where we can help you better manage your alerts and incidents, and also streamline your incident response and other SOAR processes. Now, the first component, orchestration, is all about giving you the ability to control your security product stack from one single location. And we do this by ingesting alerts from all your security products. So you have a central repository for all of your incidents and your indicators or IOCs. And these alerts can trigger playbooks, which are task-based workflows that can coordinate incidents response across your products and your teams. 
The second component, automation, involves finding your, your repeatable tasks and then executing them at machine speed. So a part of all of your playbook tasks can be automated, and Misto has thousands of built-in automation scripts that you can easily customize, and also hundreds of product integrations to help accomplish this. And the final component, response, involves helping you to maintain oversight of an incident throughout its whole life cycle. So within Misto, this includes case management via a war room where your analysts can collaborate with each other and also easily query the incidents and indicators during the investigation phase. And every action that's done by the analyst or the automated script is, is auto-documented, so it's easy for you to streamline post-investigation reporting. So this is another view showing how Demisto sits in your SOC. As you can see, Demisto ingests the aggregated alerts from the, your detection sources, and these can be SIMs, network security tools, vulnerability management, endpoint protection, mailboxes, etc before executing these automatable process-driven playbooks to enrich and respond to these alerts. And these playbooks obviously coordinate across, as I said, technologies, your teams, even your end users, to give you more centralized visibility and control. Here's a snapshot, sorry, here's a snapshot of our integrations. We have a very extensible network of integrations and every two weeks we add more new integrations we're at 300 and counting now, so chances are we probably have your product covered and your use case covered as well. And speaking of use cases, let's start with the impossible traveler. So Joe's on summer vacation, but he appears to be logging in to work. But can Joe be in Switzerland and Washington DC on the same day? So with, with today's distributed and global for, for, force, it's really tough to spot a malicious VPN access attempt from a real case of your employee traveling and accessing from another country. And with increased cloud adoption, there's really multiple login sources as well to verify. So needless to say, tracking user logins can be very repetitive for your team. So Pramuk, can you share with our audience how Demisto can help us handle these instances of teleporting time travelers? Sure, Jane, uh, thanks again. So. Uh, impossible time traveler alert, uh, which is a most popular use case that we come across most of the times, is generally triggered uh, as part of uh, an incident coming into Demisto from an SIEM. So uh, what typically happens is it could be a fraud or could be a due to a data breach, compromise user identity. Most of the times we do see alerts coming into Demisto. But the core uh, issue is how can we actually help the security response analyst to take uh, active response in order to really reduce the mean time to response once you have this incident coming into Demisto. So here's a classic use case where uh, two IP addresses are tied to the same user and the user is basically far apart. Uh, geographically. So in Demisto, uh, what we can do is we can use the Active Directory information, the integration, to enrich the user information. We can actually retrieve the user and as well as the user's team and manage uh, account details. And simultaneously, what we can also do is to enrich the IP information. And when I say enrichment, in Demisto, we can check the IP reputation, both for the previous and the current IP addresses, as well as uh, segregate internal and external IP addresses, and also do uh, IP to host mapping. And all of this really becomes a good context for the incident response analyst uh, to take decisive action. And finally, we can do uh, automated uh, checks in order to find out whether if this incident is really malicious, we can calculate a distance between the two IPs uh, located in a very good visual representation in the form of a map that you'll see in the demo, and as well as uh, generate uh, even duration. And once you are sure that this is a uh, a compromised user identity and it's a malicious incident, you can actually go ahead and automatically contain and take uh, response actions, such as changing the incident severity to high, disabling the user account immediately, blocking the malicious IP addresses in the firewall, notifying the management, and as well as generate a comprehensive report and circulate it automatically to all the uh, stakeholders. So let's go ahead and see how we can actually do it in Demisto. So uh, as we call this as really an impossible traveler investigation, this is the Demisto's playbook, uh, which is used uh, in conjunction to the response process. So uh, over here, what's really happening is we are ingesting an alert coming into Demisto from Splunk, which is uh, SIM solution. 
And once we have those uh, alert details into the MISTO, we do the first thing is to parse the event data and set all the relevant information into the incident details. On the left-hand side, what you see is the six section views, and this uh, all the six sections, starting from the summary, war room, work plan, evidence for related incidents, and canvas, are tied to this individual investigation. So you really have 360-degree information and view with respect to this uh, investigation, right from the time you ingest an alert coming into the minister from a third party, uh, same platform, all the way up to uh, decisive remediation and response action. So once you parse the incidents, uh, what we're doing here is by virtue of our integrations with the Active Directory, we are doing a quick search on the Active Directory, uh, getting the user information, uh, or in this case, as you see on the left-hand side, uh, you have the computer name, the title, the last name, email address, MAC address, pretty much all the information that you need for that specific uh, user. So this rectangular box that you see is basically a task. Uh, human action today takes a lot of time. Uh, the user really needs to have access to the Active Directory, go through certain chain management process uh, to request access for all this information. But as you see in the Demistos playbook, once you have the standard operating procedures, it's very easy for you to really implement and automate the whole process. And the next step, what we're doing here is to really do a quick check uh, to find out whether the user account have a manager in the system. So in this case, we don't have any. So it skips the manager's account information and goes directly uh, to calculate the geographical distance. But simultaneously, as you see, there's other two flows, which is basically calculating the event and IP enrichment for both the previous uh, IP address as well as the current IP address. And once you have both the information, we are doing three uh, actions in a sequential fashion. The first one is to really calculate the geographical distance. And we do this with the help of calculate geodistance using the coordinates. And as you see here, it's really 4,000 miles. And so these two IP addresses geographically are 4,000 miles apart. Second is we are doing uh, a quick lookup on the map to really locate uh, and find out a location map. And as you see, these are really transatlantic. So the first IP was somewhere near DC and the second one is in Switzerland. And um, as you see, it's really uh, far apart. And the third one, as you see, we also calculate the event duration between these two incidents and which is 10 minutes. So it's pretty evident clearly that this is uh, an impossible travel incident as the name suggests for this uh, security incident. And then we are pretty much sure uh, that the analyst needs to go ahead and take certain response actions quickly. So what we are doing here is uh, the incident gets automatically assigned to an analyst. So uh, Demisto has automated the process in terms of finding out who is the SME for this kind of an incident. You can also do it manually, as well as have a pre-configured security analyst based on uh, the shifts, for instance, uh, to take ownership of this incident from a response standpoint. Uh, we are calculating the incident severity here, setting the severity to high and then quickly disabling the user account in the Active Directory. And then doing certain other checks, for instance, should we block this external IP uh, address at all? So we do reputation checks with the help of threat intel platform integrations that Demisto has, and uh, using the output outcome of that, whether the IP is malicious or not, we are basically blocking the malicious IP and the firewall and also notifying the management team. So all this, uh, I took a while to really explain this, but it really happens in a few minutes. And uh, this is the power of Demisto. The key value prop here is how quickly are you responding to an incident of this sort? And again, speaking of scale, you might have 10 more incidents uh, of similar nature for 10 other compromised accounts as well. So the playbook really scales and helps you automate across the 10 within a very short period of time, few minutes. Um, so that's pretty much, uh, Jane, so over to you. All right, great. Unfortunately, teleporting isn't quite a reality yet. <laughs> so let's move on to the next use case. And here's where you'll meet the internet's latest bad boy, cryptojacking, and how we can better deal with that. So with cryptojacking, hackers are now using old tricks and new cryptocurrencies to basically steal computing power to mine for digital money. And this is becoming more of a problem and more and more of a problem. Our cloud security trend study discovered that 8% of organizations had cryptojacking activity within their cloud environments. And this goes across AWS, Azure, and Google cloud environments. They also found that all of the cryptojacking incidents involve some kind of misconfiguration issue. Well, that's probably the case because a lot of the cloud um, capabilities allows your users to be 
able to easily create and modify apps and services on demand. And this often can occur without any security oversight. Um, but manually monitoring and auditing all of these configurations is not really practical either because everything changes so fast in the cloud. But as we know, unfortunately, if a breach does happen, it can have very huge business impact on your organization. So Pramut, can you show us how Demisto can help us deal with uh, these illegal miners? Sure, Jim. Um, so last year we saw that crypto jacking really took over uh, ransomware as the key, uh, as the most popular use case that we have seen across from an attack perspective. So crypto jacking essentially is an attacker basically hijacking your network Ill illegally, illicitly, and very discreetly to mine Bitcoins. And Bitcoin, uh, as we all know, is a cryptocurrency of high value. Uh, although it fluctuates in the marketplace, but uh, this has been a huge pain point for customers, uh, for really large customers who are moving to the cloud are really on the cloud. And um, uh, Amazon Web Services, whom we partner with, really released a finding ID uh, specifically for Bitcoin mining alert. So uh, in this use case, what really is happening is we do get a Bitcoin mining alert into the Misto. And uh, with all the context and relevant details that we ingest readily because we do ingest the alerts through the APIs, bi-directional APIs. And uh, we do a certain sequential task as part of the playbook that we'll see in the demo, starting from really compiling the alert details. We do get uh, AWS Security Hub alert details. We can also get the alert directly from uh, AWS Guard Duty finding ID. And uh, we can do certain actions. Again, these actions are part of the standard operating procedures, really differs from uh, customers' environment and standard best practices perspective. But one of the key things that we have seen commonly being done is to open a ticket as well as enrich uh, context uh, around the, the security group details and the instant details to also get the indicators of compromise and tie this all together with the help of threat intelligence uh, coming in from third party sources. And uh, the incident response teams, uh, predominantly we have seen DevOps, DevSecOps teams being a different team in this case, uh, who really own the EC2 instances. So they really make uh, need to make decisions, for instance, whether to isolate this EC2 instance. And uh, these are really critical decisions for, because those EC2 instances might be very critical and there'll be many instances uh, in the place. So once you have these decisions, uh, it's really uh, important to quarantine these inst uh, instances. Uh, for instance, take your volume snapshots if you need to create tags uh, so that you know the, uh, the organization, the rest of the team is aware of the fact that this instance is going to be quarantined and also send relevant emails and reports to other stakeholders. And um, if not, then we also can sanitize and just close this ticket uh, in case we need to do so. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, a demonstration of a crypto jacking EC2 remediation playbook uh, that the minister has built. So as you can see here, uh, we have got this uh, alert into the minister from AWS Security Hub. And the playbook is called Response to a Cryptocurrency Mining Alert. So the first thing what we are essentially doing is printing and marking the alert as an evidence. So as you see on the left hand side, you have an evidence board. So this really helps uh, the teams to do a quick retrospective analysis in terms of understanding uh, what really happened in the past. We are also opening a ticket uh, in Jira or ServiceNow that Demisto readily integrates with all the ticketing systems. Although Demisto has its own war room where everything, each of these uh, action response actions are basically being automatically documented. So this really uh, keeps on building a repository as such. And as you see, there are two different flows on the left-hand side and then the right-hand side. So uh, again, uh, for the purpose of the demo, I'm considering it's a hybrid cloud uh, enterprise where you have some of the um, assets on-prem and then you have a cloud instance. So what we are really doing is we are getting the instance details, we are getting the security group details, uh, we are taking a volume snapshot over here and then creating a tag. Uh, so these steps, as you see, are classic digital forensics and incident response actions, but in the cloud. And what we are also doing is moving that EC2 instance into a separate VPC. Uh, as we used to do on the VLAN in the on-prem world, we are getting a list of running processes with the help of Demisto's digitally dissolvable agents, analyzing the results, and also sending an email. So these are the standard workflows for uh, an analyst response. And on the left-hand side, what we are doing is we are really extracting the indicators of compromise, enriching it, making certain decisions whether the IPs found are malicious, blocking those IPs, and uh, really doing quick actions like updating the Jira ticket, generating um, 
uh, a report and as you see uh, you can actually download this report right on the playbook or you can actually have it sent uh, to the stakeholders so uh, again all these things and then you can actually go for further review and uh, close the investigation at the end so each of this uh, uh, rectangular box is a human action today it takes a lot of time and especially when we are talking about two different teams, you have an on-prem team, a centralized SOC, and a DevSecOps team. Uh, it really requires a lot of interaction, coordination uh, between different teams, as well as uh, changes required on the appropriate security products. So really the power of orchestration and automation here clearly is evident that you can actually, if you have a standard operating procedure, you can actually have used the Demistos auto remediation, EC2 auto remediation playbook to uh, take quick action on an attack like crypto jacking. Over to you. All right. Thank you, Pramukh. So now that we've seen how we can deal with those bad miners, let's look at the next use case where we will talk about some other uses for cloud security. Um, and in the cloud, basically, um, you know, when you have your cloud infrastructure, it's often a shared responsibility between you and your cloud service provider. What this means is that your security teams are still tasked to monitor security data or generated from resource configurations, from use activities, network traffic, from hosts. And that means basically jumping between multiple consoles across the cloud environment. And the volume of cloud data coupled with the constant changes in the cloud makes it a real challenge for your team to be able to respond at the scale and the speed that's needed. So imagine having playbooks at your command that can help you automate a huge portion of these routine cloud security operations. And this would potentially free up huge chunks of security analyst time, which can then be devoted to more interesting things like proactive threat hunting and investigation and maybe a little fishing, real one, that is, um, on the side. So promote what are some ways that we can leverage automation to help speed up cloud security operations? Sure, uh, thanks, Jane. So uh, one of the use cases that we have seen uh, as customers are moving to cloud, as we saw in the previous use case, is uh, across this cloud spectrum, we have different types of uh, alerts coming in. So it's easy to say cloud security incidents, but they are really categorized into different forms, for instance, uh, again, the reason being uh, the cloud really makes customers a shared responsibility between uh, you in the sense the organization and the cloud service provider. And customer teams are really forced to monitor disparate data sets as a result. So the uh, alert types could be resource configs, uh, user activity, network activity, host monitoring, compliance is a huge one, misconfiguration is another one, network anomaly, and so on and so forth. So uh, we really sat down with some of the uh, internal teams, um, Prisma, Public Cloud, previously Redlock. Uh, we have a rich uh, and powerful integration with them. And what we really thought of, how, why don't we really offer a playbook which can automate the response actions for all of these alerts uh, using a simple uh, single playbook. Uh, and as a result, uh, for some of the use cases, and again, these uses, use cases could really differ depending on the type of alerts, uh, but we have come up with a sim single playbook that we'll see in, in the demo. So here, what we are doing is the playbook is structured as such, as and when the alerts coming in from Prisma Public Cloud or previously Redlock, we ingest them, and uh, each alert has its own policy ID. So we get those policy ID and store it in our context. We open a ticket and do something called conditional checks on the policy ID. So the routines or scripts that we have built, what we call automation, is as such that for each uh, specific policy ID, we have a specific conditional check. And if the conditional uh, check actually matches, uh, the playbook, basically a specific task of the playbook gets automatically executed. So, and this basically is scalable as such. Uh, so far, we have automatically remediated 30 plus uh, different policy alerts coming in to Demisto from Redlock. And we have this uh, basically triggered automatically as and when the policy ID and the condition check uh, is matched. And uh, based on uh, this, customers can actually leverage this playbook and reuse it, and as well as basically uh, modify it because we make everything fully available. Uh, to fit in their standard best practices. So let's go ahead and see this playbook in action. So uh, this is a, uh, an incident coming into Demesto. Uh, it's AWS security groups allowing internet traffic from the internet to the RDP port, which is 3389. So 
as we uh, talked about uh, on the left hand side what you see is really a different uh, sets of alerts coming into demisto and these are all prisma public cloud or redlock alerts and for each one of them basically we have a conditional check so if the incident policy id matches a conditional routine within the playbook the task within that routine or or also an external playbook we call it nested playbook gets automatically executed Pramuk, I'm going to interrupt you sure. real quick. Do you mind if you could zoom in a little bit on the playbook so sure. the audience can see? Awesome. Yep. Thank you so much. Yeah. So we do have the zoom in and zoom out feature. Sometimes the playbooks really big, become gets bigger, and uh, this really is helpful as well as the navigator. So on the left hand side, we have these different alerts, and we have the routines automatically documented. So we call it automations, which can be found listed in the automations tab on the left hand side as you see so in the playbook what's really happening is as the alert comes in it performs automatic checks so if you see for this particular alert uh, it says remove ec2 security group rules containing uh, the global access tcp port 3389 which is the rdp port and it's automatically matching to this particular routine which executes a set of tasks automatically for you and uh, and closes the investigation so uh, essentially this is 100 percent automation for set, uh, for 30 plus different deadlock alerts and uh, again this playbook can be modified it's pretty flexible if you want to change one of those scripts you can actually do so as well all Thank right you. great thanks promote that sounds like a pretty powerful playbook there so we've dwelt a bit in the cloud. Now let's come down to earth, so to speak, and talk about your enterprise security environment. Now here you usually find multiple teams and best of breed security tools that focus on different areas. You've got your network security, your firewalls, your threat intel, your vulnerability management, your endpoint protection, your change management, and you have different teams managing these different areas. So unfortunately, all of these teams and tools kind of function in silos. So there's kind of a lack of standardized processes that can knit together these different functions to provide continuity across an entire incident life cycle. And obviously this impacts your MTTR. So Pramukh, is it possible to leverage um, our playbooks in a more traditional enterprise security setting? Absolutely, Jane. So, uh, so this use case that we'll see here is a classic uh, centralized security operations centers use case. So, what uh, typically happens on, in the on-prem world is uh, we have a same uh, all the data lake these days in the cloud, uh, being a primary source of alert collection as well as uh, generation source for them as well. So, we actively ingest alerts from um, the SAMs here. And each alert, which becomes an active investigation in Demisto, uh, triggers a playbook associated with that alert category. So if it is a phishing alert, we have phishing playbook that automatically gets triggered. If it's a malware uh, uh, alert, we have a malware playbook which gets automatically. So you configure in such a way that for each different alert categories, you have a certain playbook. Uh, so over here, what's happening is we have a set of uh, machine learning algorithms, we call it DBOT, which makes active suggestion uh, for which analyst uh, for this particular incident type to be assigned to. So based on this, what we have seen in our existing customer base, most of the uh, security analysts become SMEs, subject matter experts, uh, because DBOT has basically, and DBOT actively makes suggestions for those specific analysts. Uh, the reason is DBOT actively learns from the analyst response actions. So if you have, if there is an analyst who is who has been responding to a phishing uh, kind of an alert, so those kind of alerts will get automatically assigned to that particular analyst. So that's a huge uh, quick win because most of the times, depending on the scale of the SOC and the number of alerts, it becomes uh, a chaotic uh, atmosphere in terms of whom to assign this particular incident uh, in order to have a closure. And then uh, we automatically get critical threat alerts. Uh, in this case, we are using Cortex Data Lake uh, for the alert ingestion source. So we are getting uh, the threat alert, social application traffic, as well as file information. And we are using uh, Palo Alto Network's autofocus and wildfire in this playbook that you'll see uh, to retrieve the sample analysis as well as perform file reputation. You can also use your own threat intel sources. We do integrate with almost all the threat intel platforms. And do a quick check uh, to find out the reputation for the hashes and the IPs. We can also do for the URLs. So uh, in 
term in case if there is a hash reputation uh, which is malicious you immediately block those hashes back in cortex you can notify analyst for review uh, as well as update tickets uh, in them as too so this again uh, goes and sits in the um, uh, the war room, which really becomes a single source to review all the response actions, as well as in case of a malicious IP, you can actually go and block IPs in the Palo Alto Networks firewall in this case, or other firewalls that we readily integrate with. And uh, again, we have this uh, automatic generation of uh, detailed comprehensive incident investigation report that could be used uh, to circulate to different stakeholders. So let's see this in action. So uh, Again, I probably will go ahead and zoom in to this a little bit. So we have three different workflows. And as you see, you can actually have more different workflows executing parallelly. So the data flow and control flow really depends on how you configure the playbook. So in this case, uh, we are getting uh, critical threat alerts uh, from Cortex data lake, um, as well as uh, the social application information uh, from Cortex. And once we have the file information, we are using Autofocus, a Threat Intel platform, our product in this case, to search for samples. We are also using it to check the coverage and connection information, DNS information, as well as HTTP information for this flow. And uh, parallelly, what we are also doing is we are using our integration with Wi-Fi uh, to upload the file and get a verdict. And back, we are also checking Autofocus file reputation. There's an API for that. And then uh, on the right hand side, we are checking the IP reputation for the destination IPs. We are checking the IP if it, whether it is malicious or not. And these IPs can be probably more than one, maybe 10 more different IPs. So we also support arrays of IP. So that's another uh, critical PowerPoint for this uh, playbook. So it can actually work on multiple IPs and feed all those IPs back to uh, a firewall post checks and approval from the analyst to block those IPs uh, in the firewalls. And once you are done, uh, you can also generate a manual incident and assign an incident to an analyst. And uh, if an analyst wants to do a deep dive uh, investigation, you can have a manual task as well. Um, and post uh, all these actions, you can actually wait for review and generate an uh, investigation summary report that you can actually go ahead and automatically uh, basically circulate to different team members. And one thing I also wanted to emphasize, uh, apart from this playbook running automatically, uh, there may be certain other use cases which could be scheduled as a job. So Demistode has support jobs. So that really helps for your procedures to uh, execute on a periodic and timely basis. So that helps um, in um, reducing the time, but also help you scale and fit into your um, processes. Cool. It's back to you, Jane. All right, thanks, Pramukh. Um, so as you can see from all the use cases and playbooks that we've um, showed, gives you just a taste of you know, the breadth of use cases that are possible with the MISTO. And um, right now we're gonna move on to our last use case for this session, and that's on vulnerability management. And for this, we're gonna mix things up a bit and show you how one customer uses the MISTO to streamline their vulnerability management. So our customer WestJet is the second largest air carrier in Canada. They average over 700 flights carrying over 60,000 passengers per day. And they're a publicly traded company with more than 13,000 employees. So in the next video snippet that you'll see, which we're pulling from a live presentation at the Palo Alto Networks Ignite conference this year, the WestJet security automation analyst describes how they're using the MISTO to tie together their vulnerability management, um, their ticketing, and their reporting processes to improve their vulnerability management response. So let's go ahead um, and tee up the video. Okay, give me one second. Okay. 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 Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and make this bigger. So here, what we're going to show you, we're going to let WestJet show you what we cannot show. And it looks like you're not able to see the screen. So one second.
Okay, perfect. There we go. So we're going to let WestJet do all the talking. We're going to show you how their SOC operations regarding vulnerability management was acted before and then after Demisto as well. So we'll go ahead and click play and let Mike do the talking. You do vulnerability management. And this is what they showed us. This is vulnerability management at WestJet going fast forwarded 20 times. It's an eight and a half minute thrill ride going into Tenable, pulling out the CSV for the critical vulnerabilities for one team and opening up a ServiceNow ticket for them to remediate those vulnerabilities. Uh, due to the excitement factor of this work, um, these reports might come out on the first of the month, they might come out on the 15th of the month, uh, or they might come out when the analyst that does them gets out of therapy. Okay. So that's before SOAR. Let's get to the fun stuff. We're uh, solving a lot of manual work for our security team. All right, so let's see what this looks like in Demisto. Uh, again, lovely dashboard, throw a pie chart on there for my manager, he loves pie charts. Uh, I'm showing, again, the overall vulnerability stance for us. The monthly job, it's a pretty simple playbook. It grabs all the teams from Tenable, Right, and then executes an incident or a playbook for each one of those teams. So this is at scale. Rather than doing it one at a time, we're going to do all 30 teams at once. Get your phones ready because you're going to want to record this. Um, I put a pause in it for dramatic effect. This alone saves money in therapy every month for our analysts. Watch how fast this goes. I mean, like... Darn tootin', that's, that's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> All right, about eight seconds. It's like riding a bull. We're big fans of the Stampede in Calgary, so let's take a look at what that did. Uh, again, we call it the Tenable. We're gonna get all the assets that are tagged with that particular owner. We're gonna take that data and we're gonna push it back into Tenable to update those target and access groups for us. And then we're gonna just start making more API calls. Tenable has APIs for everything. Let's go grab a bit more information about those assets. Let's get the vulnerabilities for those assets out of Tenable. We added some custom automation to show compliance. We take the vulnerability data when it was first seen, add 60 days, it was still in our environment. Guess what? You exceed SLA. Uh, and then we do what I call add the sizzle. We just add everything up. So uh, we can put it on a report, put it on the instant layout, do that simple math, for calculating severity. Uh, and then we go get the vulnerability information, how to fix it, any other reference data that Tenable provides for our analysts. All right, and then we can, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Hopefully I'm not talking too fast. Generator report. This is just a Python script that takes all that information that Demisto put together and outputs a really nice CSV that again targets the information to help our teams remediate those. Create a service now ticket, uh, add everything up, more sizzle. And again, a nice dashboard that kind of shows us what our overall vulnerability picture is for the environment. That alone frees up our security team from instead of just creating tickets to now going to the teams that have the most vulnerabilities and sitting down and talking about how can we actually get rid of these. And then we can use the MISTO to hopefully help them out. Awesome. So thank you, Mike, from far away. Um, but we hope you kind of got an overview. It's, it's always beneficial to see it come from the customer perspective. We can show you as many cool use cases as we want, but I think for you using Demisto or even learning about the platform, seeing the product being used in real time in real companies is where the benefit really is. Let me go ahead and switch it back over to Promok so he can go ahead and present. All right, I am not Promok. <laughs> so Jing's going to talk. But, uh... So you've heard from one customer, and as we speak to our customers about their Demisto deployments, <clears throat> three key benefits keep popping up. You have the uh, reduced alert volume, and in this case, a global software company had security products that were generating up to 10,000 alerts a week, and this was causing some major alert fatigue for their five SOC analyst team. The main challenge was detecting false positives and duplicates, and they used the Mr. Playbooks to highlight common artifacts and indicators across their incidents. 
And using the Mr. Playbooks, they were able to reduce their alerts that the analysts had to touch by a staggering 95%. The next key benefit is faster response times. In this case, um, a financial services organization was able to double the speed at which they process incoming phishing incidents, which resulted in a net reduction of MTTR for them from days to minutes. And the third key benefit is more efficient security operations. In this case, uh, an energy and utilities company used a MISTO in different areas. Um, firstly, they used the Mr. Playbooks to dedupe their SIM alerts so that there were a lot less alerts for their analyst team to touch. And they also used the Mr. to automate their customized reports that they had to generate for each team um, on a weekly, monthly basis, which used to be done manually. As a result, they were able to gain back a cumulative time savings of pretty much one full time FTE. So, in summary, some of the key benefits that you should expect, and not necessarily the only benefits, but the key ones you should expect from the, a SOAR like the MISTO are less alerts for your team to touch, faster MTTR, more efficient processes, and all of this means less time in the SOC this summer. And with that, I'll hand you back to Sri. Awesome. Thanks, Jane. So thank you both, Jane and Promok. I hope you guys were able to see a lot of the benefits that came with SOAR. Um, we had a quick question regarding the WestJet playbook that I just wanted to touch on real quick. This person was asking if we could share the playbook used by WestJet um, for vulnerability management. Unfortunately, I can't share the exact playbook um, with you. However, I will be sharing a recording of the webinar itself. So like Mike mentioned, he was joking, get your phones out, record. You will still have that content, but I can't share the entire playbook with you via platform. All right, um, before we jump to questions, I wanted to touch base on a few resources we have that can further your knowledge on how SOAR can improve your SOC. If you're attending Black Hat this year, we have a very exciting new booth. It's booth number 1138. So please stop by for a booth you have never seen, I promise. <laughs> We're also hosting a party on August 6th at 1923 in Mandalay Bay. So we hope to see you there too. For more information on what we're up to during the conference, you'll be able to click the link in the third bullet point when I send the slides to you after the webinar. On to the more fun stuff. Um, we provided a link to the top SOAR use cases part one for your reference, so you'll have access to part one of the webinar series. It has an additional five use cases. We've also created a dummies book that gives you an overview of SOAR and all of its benefits. You can download it there. And Gartner just released their SOAR market guide and we're extremely honored to have had a valuable mention in the report. So you can download the report there and of course, download a free version of our products so you can get some hands-on experience too. Okay, let's open it up for questions. As a reminder, please type them in in the right-hand corner and we'll address as many as time allows. I wanted to touch on one that we had gotten a little earlier in the webinar. Does Demisto replace your current SIM or remove the need for it? Jane Promuk? Yeah, I can take that. So uh, no, so the answer is no, uh, because Demisto is a security uh, orchestration automation and response platform, not a SIM. In the sense, uh, it's not meant to really store the uh, events, alerts, or logs uh, in the long-term basis. So it doesn't really provide the exact uh, value back as a SIM. So uh, the answer is no, uh, but we do really uh, integrate with almost all the top uh, SIM providers. And just another comment, uh, Jane. Uh, so I saw that somebody asked for the vulnerability management playbook. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really encourage you to go ahead and download the free community edition because we have a, a lot of uh, built-in out-of-the-box playbooks. So we also make it available online on the GitHub, uh, so demisto slash content page uh, in the form of YAML file. And there are uh, one or two vulnerability management specific playbooks that you can actually go ahead and refer to and repurpose as required. Cool. Thanks, Pramuk. Our next question is, oh, goodness, a whole bunch rolled through. Um, cryptocurrency use case. So this is referring to that one. What are the integrations needed for it? Sure. Uh, so that's a very good question. Uh, so you would need uh, AWS Guard UT or Security Hub, one of those, uh, as well as EC2 uh, integration. So all of those are readily configured, uh, configurable in Demisto. Uh, and are available out of the box. And uh, we are the, the same uh, Bitcoin mining alert also gets into the minister from other cloud uh, threat defense platforms such as Redlock and Prisma. So if you have those 
platforms, you would still can be able to ingest the very same alert, but for the response side, you would need an uh, EC2 instance uh, integration. Awesome, thanks. And then this next question, are the shown playbooks that we demonstrated in the webinar, will those be available to everyone in the next content update? Yes, we are working on that, especially the auto remediation playbooks, uh, and we should be able to be make it available in the uh, coming content updates. Awesome. Is there an in-depth training to use Misto and write playbooks? I think this is yes. <laughs> so the answer is yes. Uh, for all the signed uh, customers and partners, we do make uh, the learning management uh, system available. But also, we have a lot of videos online uh, on the Demisto's YouTube page. So please uh, feel free to go ahead and take a look at that. Um, and if you sign up to the community edition, you actually get access to the whole documentation page. And we have very good documentation as well as videos within um, the documentation and support portal. So please feel free to go ahead and take a look at that. Jane? Yeah, we also have a Slack community, right? The DFIR community yep. where um, the experts users there that help each other out on um, fielding the Misto questions. Yeah, exactly. Next question, does Demisto take care of licensing requirements on the back end like autofocus and one of the use cases? So the answer is no. I mean, so you need to have an autofocus uh, uh, subscription separately as of today, and uh, you need to integrate just like any other integrations in Demisto. Thank you. Next question, can Demisto be useful for organizations which do not have a SIM solution? And this person is specifically asking if there are any use cases as an example. Sure, uh, SIM is just one of the uh, key alert generation source for us, but also if you have a SOC that has other uh, sources of alert generation, um, especially for instance, uh, EDR solutions, for instance, uh, or if your team generates incidents manually, uh, you can still use Demisto. And one of the examples that we showed in the demonstration uh, was if you have a file, if you want to use those files for basically ingestion and then go ahead and do a reputation check, and if the, uh, the analyst basically manually uploads those files into the war room, you can still go ahead and make use of Demisto to get all the threat uh, uh, intelligence and the outcome of the file reputation as such. But again, uh, having said that, you need to have other integrations in place uh, apart from the alert ingestion. So you definitely need to have um, the response side of uh, integrations. How do you want to really ideally respond back onto that? Thank you. Next question. Which open source tools is Demisto commonly integrated with and what are the benefits? That's a big one. <laughs> one second, we're pulling up yeah, all the so data. Have, yeah, we have all of those available uh, and we ship out of the box like OpenFish and FishMe. I think there are so many other uh, open source integrations and we also have Demisto's uh, internal <laughs> integrations that we have. Yeah, so um, there's a whole bunch, as I mentioned, of integrations. You can actually get a full list if you go to demisto.com slash integrations. And it's categorized, obviously, by type of incident or type of you know security area. So again, like I said, we do a whole bunch of, off the top of head, you know, don't know the full list of all the open source tools, but we do have. And we're, and we're adding more every couple of weeks. So every two weeks, we try to add at least one or two more. So it's it's growing. All right, um, let's see. Next question, will a watch on-demand recording be available for this presentation? Yes, I will be sending you the recording as well as the slides so you can follow along. Next question, are you ingesting information from PureSec and TwistLock now that it's under Politum Network's umbrella? So as of today, uh, no, but we will be working on that in the coming days. Perfect. Next question. When DBOT suggests an analyst to the incident assignment, does it take into account the current analyst load? How many incidents are currently assigned to him or her? So as of uh, today, the uh, answer is no. It really depends on uh, how many incidents in the past the analyst has actually worked on. Uh, but I think you can actually configure and write your own automation script and actually tag it to the individual user in case if you want to uh, have it configured this way, depending on the current analyst load, because the load really keeps right. changing. So uh, we can actually have to do an automation script. For that. Awesome. Thanks, Pramuk. Next question. Does the platform allow for multi-tenancy and MSS company using it for multiple customers? Yes. Yes, and we have many MSSPs using Demisto actively, and we have uh, full data segregation, separation, as well as a true multi-tenant uh, platform available. Yeah, and we're ways. actually currently working on a customer case study, and they are using Demisto um, 
in a multi-tenant fashion. So stay tuned for that because we're excited to release that to the public. Next question. Is it a monolithic application or master slave? Um, monolithic, we got a clarification. If you could elaborate maybe, we'll get back to you, but send me a more detailed question and then we'll go ahead and email that to you. Next question. Um, you can demisto if there's no, you can use demisto if there's no sim available, but for sure we'll not be able to handle huge alert volumes. We have not experienced anything as what you're suggesting so far. We have customers that receive hundreds and thousands of alerts, and demisto is thriving. So maybe an analyst crashes, like WestJet suggested, going to therapy. Um, but so far, demisto has not experienced anything like that. Uh, we have one more question that I'd like to address. This is a long one. It says, I have Palo Alto Network's firewalls and one of the key challenges I'm facing is to commit every time I create a dynamic address group manually or bring an entity such as URL IP domain from an external list. Do you support dynamic address grouping and external dynamic listing using playbooks? So I can take that one. Yeah, so we do integrate with Palo Alto Network a firewall. We have very rich and powerful integration. And just in the last content update, we uh, released another integration specific to cater to this uh, a particular ask. So this was an ask coming in from a lot of customers. They wanted a capability to use an external dynamic list, which most of the SOC teams maintain, uh, probably a web server for all the malicious list of malicious IP address, URLs, and domains, hundreds of those. So the question was, how can we actually readily use Demisto to get uh, refer that particular web server, get all those uh, actively ingested into Demisto, and using Demisto's playbook, uh, basically have it uh, into the firewall. So we just launched that particular integration, and we have completely automated the process uh, for the external dynamic uh, listing as well as creating dynamic address groups. So one of the key benefits here is uh, the network security analysts and the network uh, team essentially don't really need to go ahead and uh, press commit for each of those changes. So all that, so the need to commit or make changes probably post business hours is really taken away. In the sense, if you run the playbook, uh, the commit happens behind the scenes. So all the, no matter how many IPs, URLs, um, you have in the external dynamic list, uh, you can actually uh, use that particular integration and the playbook uh, to generate, as well as uh, the dynamic address group creation uh, in this case. Okay, great, thank you, Pramukh. Um, Jane, there's one more question right here. Can one playbook transition into another? Yes, um, the playbooks are very flexible and easily customizable, so you can nest sub playbooks on the, you know, bigger, um, playbooks and that way you can make it possible for you to reuse playbooks in different use case scenarios. Yeah, so the playbooks essentially really have an input and an output. So you can actually call a playbook within a playbook. So essentially using the output of a particular playbook uh, in as an input to the, the larger playbook. So this really helps in this modular capability really helps in scaling and reusing your existing playbooks uh, for other use cases as well. Awesome. Okay. Um, we are good on questions. If there's any other final ones, please type them in in the right-hand corner. Otherwise, we're good to go and we can give you 10 minutes back in your day. Um, let me give it two more seconds. Okay, we're good to go. Thank you, Jane and Pramuk. This was incredible one last time. Um, I will be sending you the recording and the slides once again as long as and in addition to a couple of other resources. So with that, we'll go ahead and close the webinar. Have a wonderful rest of your day and summer. Get out there. We're looking forward to working with you all in 2019. Thank you.